Hey everyone, it's Saturday, February 27th. The time is 1.05 p.m. and the temperature right now is 6 degrees Celsius. I'm currently walking east along the north side of Roselawn Avenue. And the plan for this one is to head over to Young Street, which is just ahead of me, and then I'll walk south down through the Davisville Village neighborhood. And I'll head east on a rather interesting street called Merton. And I'll take that over to Mount Pleasant. And I think I'll briefly explore some of the residential streets in Davisville Village and finish up somewhere around June Rollins Park. There's a look at the Midtown Toronto skyline. And this building on the left is the former home of Sporting Life. That was primarily where they sold and serviced skis and bikes and that sort of thing. They have a much larger store just to the north of here on Young Street. And I think these operations have merged into that location. So here is Young Street. So once I get south of Young and Eglinton, I'll be in Davisville Village. And here's a look at a fairly popular food truck that always seems to be in this spot. Home Appliances Food Company. And even though I live in this neighborhood, I have yet to try it. There's Canada Computers, which I think is in for an increase in business. As just up ahead here on the right is the former home of Best Buy. It closed rather suddenly about 11 days ago. They've already taken down the sign. They were operating on a curbside pickup basis for quite a while. And I remember coming to this location a long time ago when it used to be just a future shop. And there is a line one shuttle bus. And that's one of the reasons why I'm recording in Midtown today. As the subway is closed between St. Clair, which is three stations to the south of here, and Finch Station on Line 1, that's the northern terminus, I didn't really feel like dealing with shuttle buses, so I thought I'll just record a video in my area. There's the old Postal Station K, and this is Montgomery Avenue. And that is the Montgomery, a purpose-built rental building that recently opened. And for the longest time, this street here was blocked off to traffic as they were using it to 
bring in materials to construct this new condo that's just sprung up. It doesn't look like there's any retail tenants yet. I'm not sure who's planned to move in here. It used to be a rather neat two-story commercial plaza. And there's the new Thai restaurant high across the street and the Rosen Crown below it. And in the basement, Absolute Comedy, which used to be a Yuck Yucks. And that white building there is soon to be a Dollarama, something I thought Young and Eglinton could have used a long time ago. This street here is Orchard View. And connected to that apartment building there is the Young Eglinton Center. And I'm pretty sure this is the warmest day we've had this year so far. I can't remember the last time I went out and recorded a video without even wearing a coat. I was live streaming around here yesterday, or rather, rather late last night, and I went ac across Merton Street and I thought this is rather interesting, I want to come check it out during the daylight. So if that's something you'd just like to skip ahead to, there are timestamps in the description as always. And there's a look at Eglinton Subway Station across the street. It used to be connected underground here to the Young Eglinton Center. but that connection has been severed as they're currently constructing an LRT line along Eglinton. Although I don't have my hopes up that it'll open anytime soon. There's a look west along Eglinton Avenue. And now I'm in Davisville Village, which is bordered by Eglinton Avenue to the north, which is right there. And to the east would be Bayview Avenue. To the west, Young Street, where I am now and to the South Mount Pleasant Cemetery, which is down near Merton Street. There's the Mandarin Buffet. I don't know, maybe I hit it. 
And I can't remember the last time I've been to this location, but I have ordered takeout from them not too long ago, and it was actually pretty good. And just on the right here is the headquarters of Canadian Tire and TV Ontario. Those people there are all waiting for the shuttle bus. And then I'll head south to Davisville Station. It won't be long before I'm walking past that. And this intersection of Young and Eglinton has always been something of a choke point for traffic. Hopefully that clears up. There's the old home of the art shop, which is now home to the art shop condos. And there's a farm boy supermarket. And the staples that used to be well south of here, around Summer Hill, has relocated to this building. And West Elm, which is a large furniture shop, is occupying the space. The art shop used to be a furniture shop. They had a few locations, but all of them have now closed down. And that's a look along Sudan Avenue. And based on the street traffic, you would never know that we're in the middle of a pandemic right now. Retailers are open to in-store shopping only for essential goods, which means most of them are closed and curbside pickup only. Restaurants and bars are takeout only at the moment. And hopefully that all changes on March 8th. March 8th. And just to the west of here, the subway runs above ground. So rather than running underneath Young Street, shortly after St. Clair Station, it pops above ground and runs parallel to the west of Young.
and I think I read the population of Davisville Village is around 25,000. It's relatively affluent, although it's got a fairly large number of rental buildings. Particularly along Davisville Avenue, which is off in the distance there. It looks like I'm on the quieter side of Young Street right now. Isender Thai Chicken. I have yet to try that place. Or Thai Chicken, Thai Kitchen. And there's Tabuli and Spy Tech. I remember Kenny and Spenny going there. This condo is pretty new. And it looks like there's an LCBO coming into the main floor. I wonder if this place is closed for good or if they'll be reopening anytime soon. A lot of gyms and fitness facilities are particularly hard hit throughout all this. And even when they do get to open, I think it'll be on a rather limited basis. They'll only be allowed something like 10 people in total per location. I can't imagine they've been signing up many new members. Although perhaps personal trainers doing one-on-one -on -one work on the side have seen an uptick in business. So just up ahead is Chaplin Crescent on the right and Davisville Avenue on the left. And I've recorded along Davisville Avenue a number of times and the Beltline Trail, which is just to the south of it. But I have not recorded one of these videos along Merton Street. There's a former Starbucks on the, the northeast corner of the intersection there. I think someone mentioned in last night's live stream that it used to be a second cup, which is sort of a Canadian equivalent to Starbucks. There's Fat Phil's. I used to go there. It was a rather cheap place to get a meal. But I think they got locked out by the landlord a couple of years ago, and it looks like that spot has been vacant ever since. So here is Davisville Subway Station. That's where you will find the headquarters of the Toronto Transit Commission.
These shuttle buses look relatively busy. I wonder where everyone's going today. Perhaps that's just a byproduct of the nicer weather. That's one thing you definitely noticed last summer once the weather got nice. The request to stay at home was ignored by a very large percentage of the residents and probably rightfully so. You can only hole up indoors for so long, especially right after a fairly long and cold winter like this one. There's Finn McCool's. And although it's six degrees Celsius, it's still rather windy. There's the train yard at Davisville Station. You can see a number of the subway trains. And this place is an Indian resto bar. It was always quite popular when it was open. There's a northbound Line 1 train approaching Davisville Station. Although it would be empty right now. And here we are, Merton Street. So running parallel to Merton is at least until Mount Pleasant is the K Gardner Beltline Trail. That's built on an old railway, but only operated for a few years. Now it's a large park space. I've done walks and bike rides through there before. And just to the south of that is the Mount Pleasant Cemetery, which I think is easily the largest cemetery in the city of Toronto. If you look at it on Google Maps, it takes up an absolute, an absolute enormous plot of land. Maybe I'll just take a quick peek here at the trail and the cemetery. Wow, this is quite mucky. All right, back to Merton Street.
There's a neat mix of new condos, old mid and high rise apartment buildings and offices and there's even some retail and bars and restaurants along Merton. Oh, and it looks like this parking garage is a development proposal. Sorry for the sudden turn there. 37 stories. And just here on the left is the headquarters of the Girl Guides of Canada. And here's the Al Green Gallery. This place provides a venue for artists. They also raise awareness and funding for charitable causes. I think Al Green himself is an artist and philanthropist. It's a hard word to say quickly. That's the thing when I record these videos, I don't get a second take. And I think on the left here, might be a cooperative housing building for hospital workers. I remember when this daycare opened about five years ago. And in here is the Geneva Center for Autism. Autism.net. I thought this was kind of a funky office building. We'll get a look at it from the other side. Looks like some kind of, oh, Blue Ant Media, BBC Earth, Smith, Miss Smithsonian Channel, Cottage Life, The Baby Show. Sprint Senior Care. I think I saw, yep, there it is. A development notice when I walked by the other night. They're planning a 15 story residential tower for this lot. And you can see a lot of the apartment buildings along Davisville Avenue, just to the north of here. This building is part of the Geneva Center for Autism. And there is the Remax Hallmark Collection. 
Remax is a large real estate firm. And here is Le Corbeau. I think that's a 34 unit Art Deco inspired condo complex. I remember looking at a real estate listing for one of the units that was staged there and I couldn't help but think of how ridiculous it was. They had a really nice sectional sofa and directly across from it was a large painting of a flower on the wall. Then way off in the corner, perched on top of a fireplace, was a tiny little TV. I know I enjoy staring straight at a flower and cranking my head to the left and looking up and squinting to see the TV when I'm in the living room. Here's a furniture shop. Hauser Casual Furniture. And it was pointed out on my live stream that this pump here has been here since 1969. The Red Lantern, and I have never been. Hopefully they can open up soon. I'd love to give it a try, and here is Chacho's. I have been to this place. And it's got a pretty good reputation, although I think the party I was with was rather underwhelmed by it. And this is kind of interesting. Paul's Collision and Auto Body. It's not the type of business you would expect to see on a street like this. And it's right next to the home of Toronto Water. I think that's the administrative headquarters for that utility. And coming up is Mount Pleasant. On the other side of Mount Pleasant, Merton Street continues all the way to Bayview, but it's more of a traditional residential street for that part of it. Toronto Wedding Chapel. There you go, if you're looking to get married. And the Devonshire House. Looks like a 13-story condo is planned for here. One nice perk of these warmer temperatures is that the battery life on my camera seems to be drastically better. And there's a look back to the west along Merton Street. So just to the south here, you could duck into Mount Pleasant Cemetery and jump on the, belt, the Beltline Trail. I'm now walking north along the west side of Mount Pleasant Road.
So what I'll do is I'll head west down this street for a block, and then I'll walk north up to Davisville Avenue. This is Balliol Street. I'm sure I said that wrong. So the one element of Davisville Village I haven't really covered on this walk would be a residential street with mostly single-family homes on it. And eventually I'll get around to covering that and I'm sure I'll live stream through some of those streets at some point. And I'll definitely get around to doing a bike ride. Here's some of the more typical rent rental buildings you think of when you think of Davisville Station. And I think the rent is quite reasonable. Given that this is a pretty nice and convenient neighborhood. It's kind of centrally located in the city. It's a bit more quiet than Young Meglington to the north, but I'm sure some people appreciate that. Looks like a 29 story building is planned for this lot. I guess that would make sense. This doesn't seem like the best utilization of this land. I'm sure developers have thought about trying to take over these properties over here. I don't know how well the mic is picking this up, but it is rather windy right now. I'm walking straight into it. I do have the mic tucked in underneath a t-shirt to shield it from the wind. And usually that works pretty well. I think this is a private tennis club just here on the left. There's a convenience store. And that building over there. So this is Paleton Crescent. And I'm kind of curious, because this new apartment building here, not new, but the balconies look new. It has a development proposal sign on it. I can't imagine they'd want to knock this down. Maybe they're looking to just redevelop part of the land. Oh, it looks like they want to put a new building on this plot of land right here. That would be 16 stories. So Davisville Village along with Young and Eglinton are just booming with new condo developments. This new building would be packed in pretty tight. They want to put it right here.
And this is Davisville Avenue. So I will head just to the east to June Rollins Park, which I think was named after the first female mayor of the city. And I will end the video there. And then I think I'll record another video for my other channel, Johnny Stumbles, from here up to Popeyes as it's lunchtime and I could use a chicken sandwich. interested in checking that out and some other shorter Toronto videos, head over to that channel. I'm just crossing here because it looks like there's a crowd of people approaching on this side. Yikes, me and my running shoes. Here we go, June Rollins Park. Blanketed and slushy ice. <laughs> and this is when things can get quite slippery when you have a day like this where a lot of the snow melts and then it dips to below zero overnight and it freezes again. You end up with slippery surfaces all over. There are some private tennis courts at the northeast corner of the park. And look at this muck. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this walk that started just north of Young and Eglinton and headed south down Young through Davisville Village and then along Merton Street and some other side streets as I made my way over to June Rollins Park and there's the Young and Eglinton skyline off in the background there and I think I will end this video here and then I will start recording another video that heads north through Mount Pleasant Village if you want to check that out head on over to the Johnny Stumbles channel I'm not sure when exactly that one will be posted, possibly the same day I post this one. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I will catch you on the next one.